I'm going to let you in on a little secret. I actually don't believe in handling objections. If you are getting major objections, that is actually a red flag that something is wrong. You are either talking to the wrong person, you are dealing with or trying to address the wrong problem, something they don't care about, or you're not demonstrating enough value to your PPC, otherwise known as your perfect potential client, before you try to make a sale. So if that is the case, you might need to go back and do a little more work on understanding your market. Welcome to the Work Less, Play More podcast for busy entrepreneurs who are ready to ditch the hustle, stop burning out on busy work, and get back to having a life. My name is Lindsay Johnson, aka The Radical Connector, and I've spent the last 10 years teaching first-time entrepreneurs how to get customers and make money. Listen in as I chat with other hustle recovering business owners as we share our top tips for, you guessed it, working less and playing more. Let's do this. Let me ask you a question. Do you ever clam up or break out in a sweat when somebody asks you how much you charge? I'm going to share with you my six favorite tips for asking for your preferred weights confidently and so that you actually get them. Friends, my job here today is to help you ask for money. Never an easy thing to do when you're just starting out as an entrepreneur. Are you ready? Tip number one is a really simple one. Ask. Remember, knowledge is power. So the more that you are armed with the right information on what is an industry standard, what others are charging, and where you should be charging as well, the more confident you're going to feel in asking for your rates. So ask around. You can ask your other business besties. You can ask folks who do what you do or things similar to what you do and find out what they charge. You can do a quick Google search, how much is. And at the very least, come into the Rad Connectors group on Facebook Facebook and ask some of the folks in there how they settled on their rates and what they think you should be charging too. So tip number one, ask. Tip number two is to practice. And that might seem like kind of a silly one, especially for those who are not super comfortable role playing with themselves in a mirror. (laughs) But it is really effective. You want to practice saying your rates out loud confidently slowly drop your voice. You know, when we get nervous, it's really easy to start talking too fast. Our voice gets kind of tightened and high pitched and squealy. And so it does not exude a sense of calmness and ease. So I want you to really practice saying your price out loud. And I like to combine mine. So when somebody says, you know, what are your rates? I might say, well, I have a couple of different options. Option A is this and it costs this much. Option B is this and it costs this much. Which one makes the most sense for you? And when I ask that, I really do just like deliver it as this nice, calm, assumptive, of course they're gonna work with me, they just have to choose tone versus what I hear a lot of new entrepreneurs do, which is talk really fast, really high pitched, and they kind of end on an upwards inflection. It costs this. (laughs) Like, are you asking them or are you telling them? The other thing is that when you have that lack of confidence in your price delivery, it does open up negotiation. And I hear this a lot from new entrepreneurs. What do you do when someone says you're too expensive? What do you do when someone asks for a deal? You know, you have that negotiation component. And if you don't want that, the easiest way to get over that is to start practicing saying your offering and the price and then stop. Confidence, low voice, (laughs) smooth and slow tone, get practicing, it's gonna go a long way. And that leads us right into point three, which is pause. So a lot of times when entrepreneurs start saying their rates, they don't stop talking. They go on and on and on and they begin to justify the rates and explain why they charge that much and explain what they're going to get and explain all the benefits and features. They just keep going. They give the other person no time to hear what they just said, reflect, assimilate, make a decision and ask questions. So a lot of times what you end up doing is talking your consumer, your buyer out of the sale. So after you say your rate, and you say you're offering whatever it is that you're gonna give them as an option, I want you to pause. Let them be the first person to speak next. And this is actually a common sales strategy. So if you've done any sales training, you've probably been taught this. So you say, my options are this, this is how much it costs, which one makes the most sense for you? 
you let them come back with the next sentence, whether it's a question for clarification or they say, I want option A. Now, if you find yourself tripping on your words and getting stuck on what to say and the exact sentences to use, I want you to go watch my red light, green light video. I'm going to post that down at the bottom in the description and I take you through my co-created attraction-based, permission-based sales process and I give you some really great one-liners to help you actually ask for the decision. If they're ready to go, fabulous. Sign them up and get started. But what if they have more questions or some objections? Okay, this brings us to point number four, which is handling objections. And now I'm going to let you in on a little secret. I actually don't believe in handling objections. If you are getting major objections, that is actually a red flag that something is wrong. You are either talking to the wrong person, you are dealing with or trying to address the wrong problem, something they don't care about, or you're not demonstrating enough value to your PPC, otherwise known as your perfect potential client client before you try to make a sale. So if that is the case, you might need to go back and do a little more work on understanding your market. And I talk a lot about that in my four business building basics. Every new entrepreneur needs to know free mini course. Don't worry, I'm going to link it down at the bottom. Okay, so you might need to go do a bit more work on that first. Understanding your market, their main problems, the symptoms that they relate to, and how you can start giving more value before you ask for the sale. Now, what if some of those more serious objections are coming up that I know a lot of folks have to deal with? Things like, you're too expensive. I have to ask my spouse first. I just don't have time. I'm too busy. So those often are pointing to other things. Things, mostly that they don't want what you got. And so I find that handling objections is kind of a waste of time and energy and also puts you in a really weird position of feeling sort of subservient and like you're begging for the sale. It kind of makes you feel desperate. So if you're getting things like it's too expensive, the first thing you need to ask yourself is, is that true? Am I too expensive? Am I priced outside of what is reasonable for my industry? Or, and back to my original point, am I talking to the wrong person? Am I talking to somebody who would never be able to afford this and therefore my market is wrong? Or do I need to somehow reduce what's covered in my offerings so that I can price myself at a point that is accessible for my market? So again, this points to more of a market problem and not understanding what they are or talking to the wrong people or like I say, pricing yourself outside of your market, in which case you're going to have to do something about that. Now, I love this one. I have to talk to my spouse. I got to talk to my spouse first. I got to ask my spouse for permission. Okay. So again, depending on how they ask that, that could point to them using their spouse as a scapegoat and that way they can come back and say, sorry, my spouse says no. Right. Another thing might be that they are super excited and they're expressing that I'm really excited. I need to talk with my spouse to make sure that they're on board and are going to support me in this. You have to check the tone of the conversation. Do you feel like they're being used as a scapegoat or do you feel like they're going to their spouse for support? And so in that case, I might say something like that sounds great. Talk with your partner and get back to me. Let me know if you want. I am happy to jump on a call with both of you so they can ask me any questions or go through any concerns they might have. So again, you can book that second sales call and get the spouse involved as well if they're a key factor in this financial decision. Now, when you get something like, I don't have time, now's not the right time. Listen, you can't argue with time. I mean, what I usually hear when someone says that is, this isn't a priority for me right now. But you notice how I said right now. See, that's the thing in sales. A lot of times your PPCs, your perfect potential clients, they do want to work with you, but it could be they can't afford you yet and you're going to get put on the budget for next quarter. Or it could be that they don't have the time or they're not in the right place yet and they're going to come to you a year or two later. You know, whenever I do a call with somebody, I never know if they're going to sign up with me on the spot. And sometimes I get the most random people signing up with me on the spot. And I legit didn't even know they were interested. They didn't know they were they were sussing me out or ready to purchase. Those are the most fun wins. But then I get people who we have an amazing call, but they're just not ready. And so I send them to my community. We continue to stay engaged and I'll get people coming back six months, one year, two years, three years later when they are finally in a place and ready to work. That's the thing with sales, friends. 
you know, it's not on your timeline. It's on your PPC's timeline. So all of that being said, when it comes to handling objections, you need to ask yourself, are these scapegoat objections? Do they really not want to work with you, but they're trying to blame someone else so they don't hurt your feelings, so they don't say no to you? Are they real objections and there's a problem with your pricing, your market, your messaging? Or is it just that you're talking to the wrong people and you need to really go back and revisit who your market is and how you connect with them more efficiently and then deliver that value before you ask for the sale? So this leads us really nicely into tip number five, negotiate. What happens if you have someone that really wants to work with you and you really want to work with them, but you are priced outside what is affordable? Well, it's your business, baby. You get to decide what you do with that. You can offer a reduced rate for this person. You can change up your offering and maybe include a little bit less, but that way they're still getting a win and they're still getting to work with you and you're still getting to work with them and it's within their price point. You get to decide how you negotiate your own prices. And if you're somebody who is new, I'm talking inside of three years, you may need to do a little negotiating in the beginning. Now, here's what I'm going to say. If you're negotiating with every single sales call that you do, something is wrong. Okay, your price point is off. Your customer is off. Again, like the things we just talked about in point four, something is wrong. That's a red flag and you need to reevaluate. But from time to time, you might get someone who reaches out who really, really wants to work with you and they genuinely can't afford it. So you can decide on a payment plan. You can decide on deferred payments. You can decide on some sort of referral or commission structure. You can reduce your rates. You can reduce your offering. There's so much that you can do if you get creative and talk with that person to figure out what works best for them and works best for you. Now, eventually, you're going to get to a point where you won't have to negotiate, both because you will be so bang on with who your PPC is, with your marketing message, with your sales process. Also, you'll have the level of busyness and clout and reputation that you won't have to take on people that aren't able to afford you. You'll simply give them some free content and tell them to come back to you. So depending on where you're at in your business, you need to decide what fits right with you. But don't be rigid for the sake of being rigid. If you really want to work with this person and you see the value in this relationship, both because you want to get experience, you want to get the, the wins and the testimonials, and you want this person to have the impact of your work, then negotiate, baby. You got this. It's your business. You do whatever you want. And this brings us to point number six, and that is PDF that ish. <laughs> All right, so here's what I mean by that. Throw your rates in a gorgeous branded PDF. Have an outline of your packages and the rates. Make sure there's a bio and some testimonials, a little bit about the benefits. You know, you can create a standard rate sheet, a standard PDF that goes to everybody and says the same thing, or you can be a little more fluid with that and create a rate sheet or PDF specifically for that person based on what you suggest, what they need, and what you can offer. That way you can kind of skew those benefits and your bio and the right testimonials to that person in ways that they will relate to. Either way, I recommend having a lovely PDF that you send somebody after your sales call. Or if you're in a meeting with them, same thing. You can email them when you get home. It's super professional. It's taking care of your PPC and it's going to allow them to remember the things that you talked about long after that initial call. So PDF that ish and blow them away with how brilliant you are, how much you care, and what they're in store for when they decide to work with you. Okay, friends, now that you know how to ask for your money, who are you going to ask for money? If you haven't already, I want you to click that link below and go download my four business building basics every new entrepreneur needs to know. I'm going to share with you how to connect with your perfect clients, and I'm even going to go deeper into my attraction-based sales process. Bam, a lamb. For even more support, come and join my Facebook group, the Rad Connectors Community, for networking with other new entrepreneurs, tons of free content and training, and honestly, just a party and a half in the world of new entrepreneurship. I got two more videos on deck for you. The first one is all about my co-created attraction-based sales process. And the second one is whether or not imposter syndrome might be causing you to undercharge in your business. Until next time, happy connecting and I will see you online. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you want to learn more about joining my community for new entrepreneurs and influencers who want to ditch the busy work and discover how to work less and play more all the way to six figures and beyond, please visit theradicalconnector.com. Check out today's show notes for all the juicy resources we covered. If you love what you've heard, subscribe and leave a review. Happy connecting. I will see you online.